We'd like to welcome everyone to the July 19th, 2021 noon meeting of the Caldwell County Board of Education. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, all has been going well with you this summer and that you will take full advantage of if you're in the school system in any way, student or uh, teacher or administrator, that you'll take full advantage of the uh, time you have left uh, uh, before we head back. So uh, we're going to begin with the uh, agenda here and the first item is the invocation for the board and I'll call on uh, Mrs. Ann Edwards to lead us in that. Thank you, Chairman Pennell. I welcome this opportunity for, for reflection as we begin our July meeting, and I have chosen to consider new beginnings. As a lifelong educator, I appreciate new beginnings and clean slates. I love the anticipation, confidence, and joy that's provided by fresh starts. And I'd like to ask you to picture with me just a minute. It hasn't been that long since all of us have been there and done this, but in your mind, would you picture what the faces of these K children and our kindergarten students look like as they enter school for the first time? It is, as a principal, it was such joy to watch them enter the buildings and walk down the walkways into that door where they anticipated these new fresh starts and beginnings. Now I want you, in this video you're running through your mind, if you saw that picture, I'd like to ask you to consider those same students arriving at our high schools. We have five public high schools and I had the opportunity yesterday to talk to a young man who is going to be a senior this year. And what he was talking to me about was the kind of shirt and the outfit he was going to wear this week for his senior pictures. How quickly these moments arrive. And that's why these moments are so important. And it's the reason we're all sitting here today planning. I know you will join me as we support educators and staff who strive every day to produce confident, caring individuals who contribute to our communities. And so today I express appreciation to all faculty and staff who are going to give in service this year to provide a safe and caring envi environment conducive to teaching and learning. And so it is with thankfulness and a grateful heart that I ask you to please join me in a reflection for the freedoms that we have all been given as well as the opportunities we have to plan for the joy, the anticipation, and the potential for new beginnings in all 25 of our schools this year. Would you take a moment to reflect, please? Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Edwards. Uh, uh, next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance and we'd like to ask that you stand and I'd like to ask Assistant Superintendent Mr. David Johnson to lead us in, in that. Join me for pledge, attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to proceed with the approval of the agenda. The board's had an opportunity to review that. So do I hear a motion that we approve the agenda as presented? Chairman Pennell, make a motion we approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? And motion passes. Uh, 
Next is the approval of the minutes, and we're going to do this in a in a uh, one vote. But that would be for the June 1st, 2021 work session uh, minutes. Also on that day, a closed session uh, uh, and general account uh, minutes. Our regular school board meeting on June 7th, 2021 and a closed session minutes and general account also on that same day, June the 7th, 2021. And then our budget session minutes and closed session minutes and general account from June 30, 2021. Do I hear a motion that we approve uh, these June minutes by consent? Is there a motion to that effect? Chairman Penla, I move that we approve all June 2021 minutes and general accounts items 3B through G, 3G as presented. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Very good. We're moving on now to announcements and I want to call on uh, Vice Chairman uh, Teresa Branch. I have a Smart Start announcement to get us started. Young children in Caldwell County sure do appreciate getting a free book in the mail every single month until their fifth birthday. And I would like all of you in our audience today and all of you listening to be sure and make sure that children that you're connected to in, in your family, in your community, at your church, wherever you see young children, make sure they know about this and get signed up. They can sign up at CaldwellSmartStart.org and click the picture of Dolly and they'll receive one free book in the mail every single month until their fifth birthday. And this is powerful in helping children be ready for school, ready for kindergarten, ready for life. And um, Dr. Phipps is going to uh, do the school system announcements. We are wrapping up summer school. We finished that up on July the 2nd. We had students in for a calendar month. We got a, quite a bit of college. <coughs> This was the first year that we've done the state mandated, legislatively mandated uh, requirement for summer school the way that we've done it. We called it Camp Caldwell this year. We served a, a large number of students and, and had a, a great experience for teachers and students and we're grateful for all of our staff members that were involved. We continue to have some of our high school students that are doing credit recovery and grad point that will continue on. I uh, also want to give you an update that we uh, will continue our meal distribution these are meals for children and teens, really birth through 18 in our county, uh, whether they're a public school student or not. The pickups are continue to be every Wednesday from 11 to 1 p.m. and from 3.30 to 5.30 at High Brighton, South Caldwell, and West Caldwell. And our number now is somewhere over 2.5 million meals that we've distributed in our communities, and we want to continue to do that work. And finally, I want to share with you that the Hall of Honor recognition that we have will be on October the 18th this year at 6 p.m. over across the street at the Civic Center. Applications to be considered for induction at the 18th of October event must be received by Ju July the 30th. And I've had a couple calls last few weeks about that. So the deadline is July the 30th and the event will actually be on October the 18th. And we hope we have lots of applications to go through. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Dr. Phipps and uh, Mrs. Branch. Um, at this time, we're going to do the honors and recognitions, and this is certainly a, a part that we look forward to. We always like to recognize our, the achievements of our uh, fine students here in Caldwell County and our uh, teachers and administrators. And to lead us in this section, I'd like to call on Mrs. Libby Brown, who is the Director of Cuman, uh, Community Relations. And she'll come to the podium uh, and present this uh, part of our program. So thank you, Chairman Pennell, Vice Chairman Branch, board members, and Dr. Phipps. So even though we're during our summer break, as Dr. Phipps mentioned about summer school, there's been lots of activity. And it's just so uh, reassuring to see our students learning and enriching their studies during the summer months. And we have quite a few honors and recognitions. And we'll start with a, con a big congratulations to Jade Hutto. She is a 2021 graduate of South Caldwell High School, uh, the women's wrestling state champion right here uh, in our midst at South Caldwell High School. 
Jade wrestled in the 132 pound weight class at the North Carolina High School Athletic Association third annual women's wrestling invitational. This is Jade's second wrestling title in three years. Uh, what an incredible high school career in wrestling to be a state champion twice out of three years offered. She is coached by Dusty Smith. He's the head coach and Dana Smith, yes they are related, assistant coach. Uh, they are both here with us as well as the principal, Philip Little. And Jade is the daughter of Amy Hutto and Tex Helms. So we are very proud of Jade. I would like for the coaches to come up because it's a very interesting story why she is not here. And I'm not sure if, if Jade is, has joined us via Zoom. I know some of our students have. Uh, do you see Jade up there? She has not. So I think it's it just goes along with her accomplishments as to where she is right this minute and why she's not with us. So. Uh, Dusty or David? Um, Jade's currently in Fargo, North Dakota. She's wrestling um, in the women's freestyle 18U division. Um, participants over 3,000. Um, probably one of the toughest tournaments in the nation and the largest tournament in the world hosted every year. So we, we wish her luck this week. Yes, that's and Dusty is a former Fargo Invitational uh, participant. I so. participate. <laughs> We have a lot to be proud of today. Next is a familiar name to one of our board members, Katie Becker, South Cowell High School. Congratulations to Katie Becker uh, for being named the 4A North Carolina Pitcher of the Year West. And I'm going to go down these stats, so please forgive me if I say something that's not appropriate to all of you great softball and baseball fans. Um, Katie led the conference and district with nine home runs and pitched 74 innings with a jaw-dropping 90 strikeouts. She had earned, she had an earned run average, an ERA of 1.42, and with impressive stats such as these, she was selected for the 3A-4A Northwest Conference All-Conference Team, North Carolina District 7 All-District Team, and North Carolina All-State Team. Let me take a breath. As a standout athlete, Katie, because there's more, Katie Becker has been named as the 3A, 4A Northwest Conference Pitcher of the Year, North Carolina District 7 Pitcher of the Year, and recently named to Extra Inning Softball as the 2021 First Team High School All-American Pitcher Multi-Purpose Player. And all of her countless dedicated hours to softball, she still finds time to be the South Cowell High School Volleyball 2020-21 Offensive Player of the Year. What an accomplishment for Katie. And we're so proud of you. Uh, her coach, her softball coach, is Casey Justice. She is the daughter of Monique and Chris Becker, one of our board members. So a proud daddy sitting up there. And if you want to, Dad, you want to come and Absolutely. put this on her? Since he's mine, do I have to wear a mask? <laughs> 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 so here we go. Thank you. 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 Congratulations to Jillian Jones, 2021 High Brighton High School graduate, for being named the 2A North Carolina Pitcher of the Year West. We have two in our district, Pitchers of the Year. High Brighton High School softball team won the 2A Conference Championship title. They had 14 wins, one playoff win, and one loss. Jillian had 145 strikeouts, six walks, with an ERA of 0.51 this season. She also received Most Valuable Player, Charlotte Observer Player of the Week, Northwestern Foothills 2A Conference Pitcher of the Year, and North Carolina Softball Coaches Association District 7-2A Pitcher of the Year 
which is made up of 13 surrounding counties. She earned the titles of all conference, all district, and all state. She will be playing softball starting this fall at Catawba Valley Community College. We're just in awe. Okay. <laughs> um, was Jim Blanton your coach? Okay. So Jillian's coach at High Brighton High School was coach Jim Blanton, if, if you read the news, who recently announced his retirement from coaching Panthers softball for 17 years. He finished, I just want to brag a few minutes about Jim. He finished his last season this year with these wonderful players like Jillian as the Northwestern Foothills Conference Softball Coach of the Year and he will continue coaching men's soccer. He was awarded Northwestern Foothills Conference Soccer Coach of the Year and Region 10 2A Soccer Coach of the Year last year. There's lots of awards. We're so proud of you. You want to come up, Jillian? High Brighton High Principal is Courtney Wright and daughter of uh, Kim Jones, who works for the Caldwell County Schools, and Caldwell County Sheriff Alan Jones. We are very proud of you and your future pursuits. Are you going to play softball? We know you are. Yeah. Okay. Kim and Sheriff, would you like to come up and do the honors since we have our supportive parents here? Jillian, any words? <laughs> I should have asked Katie. Katie, any words? Um, I just want to say thank you to the community and everyone who comes out to all of our games and supports us no matter where we are because it really does help and means a lot to us. Well, thank you. It's really sweet. Okay. So let's get a picture. Y'all can come out and support Post 392. They're both playing uh, this summer, and we're starting off the uh, tournament state playoffs Wonderful. tonight. <coughs> where at, where at did Brighton. they play? It's going to be at High Brighton tonight because okay. we were the higher seed. So. What time? Wonderful. Seven o'clock. Seven. Thank you, Kim, for reminding us to come out and support them. Okay, we're going to turn to more award-winning students, but this is in the field of art, uh, athletics, and and our artists all together are doing incredible things. Congratulations to Ava Weaver of South Caldwell High School for placing nationally in three Division I art competitions, fourth in digital, digital art, fifth in on-site prompted drawing, and seventh in drawing at the National Beta Convention. Ava placed in the top five in four statewide art competitions at the state level and then she ranked North Carolina champion in the on-site drawing one competition. So here we have our state competition competing nationally who brought it home for us and for herself and for her family. Jonathan Hass is the South Caldwell House School Beta Advisor and the North Carolina Beta Status Sponsor who is here with us. And Ava is the daughter of Kimberly and Benji Weaver. So, Jonathan, are the parents here, or is uh, Ava? Uh, she had another school commitment, unfortunately. Okay, you want to come up and get her medallion? I will. Okay. <laughs> so, we're very proud of these artists, and let's give Ava a big round of applause. And Molly Smith. Molly is a rising senior at High Brighton High School who placed second in the nation. So I just really want to emphasize Nash, these are national winners for the two-dimensional design at the National Beta Convention. She placed third at the statewide beta convention which allowed her to compete at the national level. Congratulations to Molly for placing second in the nation again there. We are at national attention. We're so proud of this high honor. Shauna Greeno Bridges is the High Brighton High Beta Advisor, and Molly is the daughter of Julie and Jason Smith. So, Molly, is are you on the Zoom, Molly? Yes, I am. Hi. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Um. I would just like to thank the entire High Brighton High School Beta because we all kind of collectively, I kind of texted everyone and we all collectively came up with this idea because the theme was it all began with Beta. 
and my brain immediately went to the land before time which is of like dinosaurs and stuff and theme was like Disney and stuff and I totally didn't go with that theme and I think the originality kind of helped with that second placing well very good well we are very proud of you. you're an excellent artist uh, you deserve that recognition and let's give Molly another big round of applause <laughs> And if you'd like to see the artwork of both of the girls, they are posted on the Caldwell County Schools Facebook page. And uh, so go and just see for yourself how wonderful they are. Libby, can we get a picture with the wrestling coaches since they're here? Absolutely. You guys want to come on out? Yeah. You might, you guys want to? Okay. Yeah. We'll just get a picture of you two together. Thank congratulations. you. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. And certainly, uh, congratulations to each of our excellent students in athletics and uh, art and the various other categories, and to our, our great coaches and teachers and administrators that uh, make it possible for these students to be successful. So, we're very, very proud of uh, each of you. Next item on the agenda is the uh, uh, public comment, and as of uh, uh, prior to our meeting today, we had uh, two people that had signed up for public comment. And let me just briefly go over the uh, uh, the guidelines here. Uh, there is a three-minute period of time that you will have to speak. Uh, Dr. Phipps will be uh, the timekeeper in regards to that and the board by policy will not respond at the uh, the end of uh, uh, each of these so we're going to begin in the order that uh, they were received and i'd like to call on uh, mr ronald king to come to the podium yes hello there Good morning, thanks for having me. Um, and listening to the people's voices, freedom to speak and all that. Um, <clears throat> I do wanna say I do live here in Caldwell County. Um, lived here 14 years. Uh, I don't have children. Um, I have had very little interaction with Caldwell County Schools, not too much familiar with North Carolina curriculum. Um, but I do wanna say I recall my school teaching growing up and how solid that was and I do remember some of my favorite teachers um, and I do pay school taxes on my property so um, you know funding the teachers school functions and the board um, what I'm coming here for today first of all or is the new curriculum that is being put forward uh, you know a couple of years ago we had common core introduced from coming down from the federal government we were wondering what that was and it didn't turn out to be the best thing in my my view but so the main concern here is the new curriculums that are being put forward is critical race theory, CRT, and then also the 1619 project, which is a sort of a realignment of historical take on America. But um, so, um, you know, the, the primarily these two things, CR, critical race theory and the 1619 project are we I view is unhealthy for the children it's unhealthy for society and the little existence of their future of America it literally runs through the fabric of our social structure and really children need to be learning uh, basics in school reading writing math science history and we're talking young kids 3 to 12 years old it's been said you know they're gonna try and uh, install this race racial stuff and um, and historical bending it, it's young as that and uh, you know it's really no place I believe for young kids like that to be subjected to uh, political act activism or sexual orientation material when they are that young uh, in the classroom they need those basic reading writing math science those are the basics to function as a as a individual in society but then also to 
to um, to be able to su succeed. But um, all right, and we do, and we we and uh, yes, we do have pledge of allegiance, and I grew up doing that to the flag, and that is a shared commonality that we're all Americans, right? We're trying to uh, keep us unified, but critical race theory tries to interject uh, a division it puts us in groups that um, that uh, it divides us and in the classroom that can end up being where um, they 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 want to call it equity and uh, but what equity means it's not equality it's equal outcomes and so to get equal outcomes they're saying one student that's societally disadvantaged um, the, and the other student, primarily, it's white, white privilege, they call it. Um, they, they have to be um, shamed or, you know, they have to be, um, uh, you know, degraded in the classroom to get that equal outcome. And it's really, how can we have that going on in our classrooms to disparage or berate students, putting them down? It's a really bad, not a positive environment for the classroom. And um, so, Mr. King, your your time set. The alarm went off. About I gave you an extra 30, 45 seconds. All right, all right. Well, that's thank, it. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, I, I appreciate you listening. I do have material I want to get to you guys. Um, I don't have with me today, but I'll get with you to your offices eventually. Okay, and um, I just want to end by saying I really feel like. These two programs, Critical Race Theory 1619, they should not be in our schools anywhere in Caldwell County. They shouldn't be in North Carolina. And uh, the end result is trying to undermine, to move us to communism, socialism in, in our Thank society. you for being here. But thank you. Thank you for listening. <clears throat> okay, uh, the next uh, public comment is from uh, Mr. Jeff Crisp. Thank you, Chairman Pennell. Um, thank you, Board, and thank you, Dr. Phipps, for your service to our community, for our schools, and, and for all you do. Uh, my name is Jeff Crisp. I'm a social studies teacher at High Brighton High School. Uh, I have 16 years. Uh, I'll be starting my 16th year at High Brighton this year and 23 years in the public school classroom in North Carolina. I'm also a parent. I have one graduate of Caldwell County Schools and two more students that are still coming through. Um, I wanted to speak to you today concerning our COVID-19 protocols as we approach going back to school in August, and specifically the, the requirement or the use of masks in our schools. Um, the current CDC guidelines uh, say that vaccinated folks uh, are not required to wear masks indoors, but unvaccinated are. Um, I think that's a, a horrible standard and approach to take for our schools because it creates a segregation of students and staff based on vaccination status. Uh, I think it creates issues with invasion of privacy uh, because obviously if you're wearing a mask, you're unvaccinated. If you're not, you're vaccinated and we have no right to know uh, our students or staff vaccination status, but wearing a mask would immediately give that away and invade the privacy of our students. Uh, obviously 12 year old uh, or those under 12 year olds have not had the opportunity to be vaccinated, uh, but I think we can all agree that the research shows that those under 12 years old are least at risk for catching the virus and least likely to spread the virus. So why would we put masks on those young students? I also think it creates pressure on those that are 12 to 17 year old to get the vaccine. And I think as a school system, we can agree it is not our place to pressure teenage <coughs> students to go get a vaccine. That should be their decision made with their parents completely outside of the school system. And so the current CDC guidelines seem untenable to me, which leads to another possibility that we would require masks in schools for everyone. Um, in 2020, 2021, uh, I wore a mask willingly because that was the guidelines and that was the guidance that we had from the CDC all the way down to the local policy. But I saw the adverse effects that had in the classroom. Um, it was difficult to teach, communication was limited, Learning, I think, was negatively affected uh, because of wearing the mask. Um, it makes it difficult to talk. It made our students less likely to speak up in the classroom because they had a mask on. It made it more difficult for them to understand what their teachers were saying because we were wearing masks. 
Um, there are negative physical and psychological effects that masks show. Um, it makes it difficult to recognize faces, which is essential for building relationships, which is so important in our schools. And so I would argue that we cannot go into this next school year and require masks. I don't think it's right. I think it has a negative impact on the learning environment, and that is what we are here to promote as a positive learning environment in our schools. And so the alternative would be uh, that I would encourage the Caldwell County Board of Education to make masks optional. Um, I understand that we're still waiting for more guidance from our governor, um, but I believe that guidance will only make things more difficult, unclear, and, and confusing for all of us, and we don't need to wait on the governor. Other school districts have already voted to make masks optional beginning August 1st, and I want to encourage Caldwell County School Board to do the same thing for our staff and students, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chris. We appreciate your comments and being here today with us. Next item on the agenda is uh, Dr. Jeff Church, our Associate Superintendent. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Phipps, I have one item for your review only, and that is uh, our sur surplus sale items for the 2020-21 school year, and it is for your information only. Thank okay, you. thank you, Dr. Church. <clears throat> Let me just uh, make a comment. We appreciate each of you being here. We know that some of you probably don't want to stay for the duration of our meeting, so now would be an appropriate time if you would like to, to leave. <coughs> thank you for being here. And next on the agenda is Assistant Superintendent Dr. Bill Griffin. This is not the first time that I began speaking that people left the room, but uh, <laughs> hopefully it's understandable. <laughs> Chairman, Chairman Pennell, Vice Chair Branch, members of the board, Dr. Phipps, I have uh, three items uh, for you uh, this afternoon. Uh, item A is human resources used on customary informational items. Those are just for information, uh, require no action at this time. Uh, item B is human resources usual and customary action items. Those are contracts. Uh, I respectfully request uh, that those human resources uh, usual and customary action items be approved uh, or recommended for approval at this time. Do I hear a motion that we approve the human resources services uh, usual and customary uh, action items as it relates to contracts? Chairman Pennell, I move that we approve the usual customary usual and customary action items as presented. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Great. Thank you very much. And then finally, uh, subject C, our July board transfers for uh, school year 2021-22. Uh, total transfers requested are 36. Total transfers board approval for board approval are 35. Transfers not recommending for board approval number one. Bring our total board approved uh, transfers for 21-22 school year to 1,438. I uh, respectfully request motion to approve uh, July board transfers for the 21-22 uh, school year. Okay, need a motion to approve the July board transfers for 2021-22. Uh, I move that we approve the July board transfers as presented by Dr. Gray. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Great. Thank you so much. And it's wonderful to see our board uh, up front <laughs> of our boardroom and uh, some community members and parents and students in our audience. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. Appreciate it. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to call on uh, Dr. Katrina McKellen, Assistant Superintendent for Auxiliary, oh, I'm sorry, not Auxiliary, <laughs> <laughs> Instructional Program <laughs> Services. Bless you and Jeff for switching jobs here. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chairman Pennell, Vice Chair Branch, members of the Board of Education, and Dr. Phipps. Um, this afternoon, I bring to you the alternative schools accountability model. So each year, the alternative schools have the option to use an alternate account.
accountability model to determine their school performance grade. Requests must be submit, submitted annually to the board to the State Board of Education, usually in August. They have three options to choose from. They can use the same model that all of our other schools use in the state of North Carolina. They can use the alternative schools progress model or they can create their own. And so we have a combination of some of those here in Caldwell County. So you have the actual information in board docs, but I'll give you a summary. For Horizons Elementary School, they will be using option B, so the second option of the alternative school's progress mod model. So measures within, within this model include student persistence, student achievement, and growth. And so they would receive a rating at the end of the year as progressing, maintaining, or declining based on how they had performed the year before. Gateway School, on the other hand, has opted to use option C, which is what they've been using for the past two years. And components of this model include student persistence, safety, student achievement, growth, and recidivism. Um, and their overall calculation would be a numerical scale of a zero to 100. So they would get some sort of grade in between those numbers. Um, and then if approved by our local board, th then this goes to the State Board of Education. Um, and in the event that either school does not have enough student data within their school, then we are choosing to send to return school scores, which means that their scores would go back to their home school because um, you know that our students in alternative school have a home school that they are connected to and then Horizons and Gateway would then receive the grade of the highest percentage where their students are enrolled. So at this point I just respectfully request your approval of option B for Horizons and option C for Gateway School. Okay. Do I hear a motion that we approve the alternative accountability model as presented by Dr. McKellen, which is uh, uh, category B for Horizons and C for Gateway. Is there a motion to that effect? I make a motion that we accept these proposals, option B for Horizons and option C for Gateway. Is there a second? Second. Anyone have any questions? Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Dr. McKellen. Next item on the agenda is our superintendent, Dr. Don Phipps. I have a couple of items. One relates to the one of the public comment uh, topics that we had, and it is COVID-19. As the school year was going on this, this year, uh, I felt like we couldn't operate more than in a two-week window because things changed every two weeks and we try to do long-term planning we try to put some things in place and then there was either another meeting by the governor or another executive order that came down uh, i felt a little bit better but we're at a point right now where as we try to plan for the return of school in august we're still in a holding pattern and waiting and we're told that there'll be a toolkit uh, revision they said the week of the 19th of july which would be this week uh, we don't know how much authority or uh, administration over the protocol and process will be given to the local school boards but I was hoping to be able to share with you today what we were going to be doing for sure moving forward but we just don't have enough information to do that the current executive order says that face masks have to be worn in k-12 settings and when folks are directly interacting with students and uh, that's that's the guidance that we have to follow and we certainly did that through our summer school program I don't know what the landscapes gonna look like in August my wish would be that we'd be back to normal five days a week no social distancing no face mask but i don't know what the executive orders are going to say or what the guidance is going to be uh, from the other authorities at that point but we certainly will give you an update the second item that i have for you is uh, item b and this would be the general council agreement that we have in place and we'll be asking for this to be approved and this would carry us through june the 30th of the year 2023 this would be for our school attorney Okay, do I hear a motion that we <coughs> approve the general council agreement uh, with uh, Wilson, Lackey, Roar, and Hall uh, through June 30, 2023? I move that we approve the general council agreement with Wilson, Lackey, Roar, and Hall. Uh, Moving forward. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion passes. Can I add one other thing? Sure. This is not on the agenda, but I want to follow up on the second uh, public comment, just, just so the public is aware of just factual information. The critical race theory pieces, 
in the curriculum for 1619 are not in the curriculum in North Carolina. They aren't. There's been conversations about it. The social studies uh, curriculum was rewritten and we haven't, we've elected not to adopt the new standards in Caldwell County for another year. And the reason is we want to make sure that resources are in place for us to adequately be able to teach and instruct. And we also know that there's a lot of discussion at the General Assembly about those standards and we don't want to get going and then have to come back and, and do some things. There's also a task force that our Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Mark Robinson, has put together called the FACTS Task Force. And it stands for Fairness and Accountability in the Classroom for Teachers and, and Students. And I don't know if folks are aware of that or not, but if you feel like there's anything, the word he uses in, is indoctrination. And I think it could be on any end of the continuum from a political mindset or wherever people are socially. If you feel like there's something that's inappropriate or shouldn't be taught that's in our classrooms, there's the ability to be able to send that up and they'll, they'll take a look at that. Um, there are community standards that vary from county to county. And anything that happens in social studies or any of the other topics that we deal with, we certainly want to look at how they impact what's going on in our schools in Caldwell County. So I don't want folks to think that we just take it and adopt whatever comes up because it's the next best thing. We want to make sure that it's the right thing, that it fits into the standards that we have, and we have long discussions. But as things presently sit in North Carolina, those two topics are not in our curriculum. Um, and that may make you feel good, it may not make you feel good, but that's a fact and I wanted to share that with you today so you're at least aware of that. Thank you, Dr. Phipps. Uh, next, uh, we're going to go into closed session. I need a motion for us to go into closed session. Chairman Pennell, I move that we go into closed session to discuss confidential personnel matters as is uh, listed on our current agenda. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And motion passes. We will be in closed session, and I believe there may be one approval item when we come back.
Okay, uh, meeting's called back to order. I'd like to recognize uh, Dr. Bill Griffin. Chairman Pendle, Vice Chair Branch, members of the board, Dr. Phipps. Um, before you uh, have the contract for employees assistance program, I respectfully request uh, that be approved as presented this afternoon. Do I hear a motion that we approve the employees assistance uh, program uh, uh, and contract as uh, presented by Dr. Uh, Griffin? I move that we improve the employee assistance program as presented by Dr. Griffin. Is there a second? I second the motion. Any comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Great. Dr. Thank you. Griffin. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, anything else from anyone? I guess we'll see you at the work session, but uh, have a good day. I hear a motion we adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We are adjourned. Everyone have a great day and a great week. Thank you.